Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 20th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Augusta, Georgia. Let's start with a diary from Friday from Xavier. Xavier looked at a backdoor that Juniper identified as targeting VMware ESXi servers. This particular backdoor was injected using a vulnerability in the OpenSLP service, very common vulnerability to be exploited in VMware ESXi. What Xavier looked into is, is this actually a new backdoor or, well, uh, just something old that sort of got rehashed? And that's exactly sort of what happened here. It just used more obfuscation with that, making it past current detection rule set up for this kind of backdoor. But in its essence, it was still the good old backdoor that has been around for a couple years now. Well, and Friday wasn't a good day for Android devices. We have sort of two Android related stories. The first story here, not just Android related, but uh, very much sort of Android focused. And that's a vulnerability in the Samsung Exynos chip. This chip is the baseband chip for many phones, not just phones made by Samsung, but apparently also used, for example, by Vivo, also by some of the Google Pixel devices. And interestingly, this chip is also used in some of the modems that you do find in cars, in particular the Exynos Auto T5123 chipset. Google's project Zero identified 18 vulnerabilities in this chipset. Four of these vulnerabilities do allow arbitrary remote code execution via the phone network. So the only thing an attacker would need is the victim's phone number. The other vulnerabilities, I wouldn't really discount them either. They can, for example, be exploited by a malicious operator. So if you're connecting to a malicious network, then this could be exploited maybe with some uh, fake uh, base station or such, uh, this could potentially also be exploited without sort of extraordinary large effort. There are patches available for these vulnerabilities. The problem, as so often with Android devices, well, it all depends on your device vendors and such to then release uh, these updates uh, to you. The list of vulnerable devices that has been identified so far is in the link that I'll add to the show notes. As a workaround, uh, Google recommends disabling a Wi-Fi calling as well as voice over LTE. Not 100% sure how good this advice is necessarily in the sense uh, how many people are able to actually fully implement it. A lot of people need uh, Wi-Fi calling if they don't have good cell coverage in particular areas. Also, voice over LTE, not 100% sure, but I think in many areas you'll need it uh, because 3G or other uh, standards are not really available for you to use. So uh, this may really not leave you with much of a workaround here. Public exploits are not available, also not a lot of details about these vulnerabilities yet, but Google states that an attacker shouldn't really have a terribly hard time coming up with a working exploit. The second Android vulnerability affects cropping images. And now quite often, of course, you see people obfuscating cropping images before they post them, for example, for social media. This is always a risky thing to do. There have been multiple issues with sort of cropping and obfuscating content images before. This latest issue here with Android is that if you're cropping an image, it may remove the content at the beginning of the image, but not at the end. And uh, so the image data that you removed may actually still be present in the image file that you posted to, for example, social media. The other problem here is that uh, this vulnerability is going back several years, I believe at least uh, five years. So any image that you posted from an Android device over the last five years is susceptible, uh, vulnerable here. 
for this particular vulnerability, some details have become available. Also, an online uh, proof of concept is available where you can upload a cropped image and it will then show you the supposedly removed part of the image. As I mentioned, it is not the first time that software had issues with uh, obfuscation or redacting of images. Never really a great thing to rely on if your life depends on it. Sometimes a better option is after you did the obfuscation to maybe do another screenshot of the image or maybe just you know, take a picture of the image with another phone and that way you're more likely to only capture what you actually see. And quick news item about password managers. Again, a Bitwarden apparently allows you to secure your master key using nothing but a numeric pin. Well, uh, no big news really here. If you're using a stupid password to secure your master key, then, well, uh, yes, it can be brute forced once an attacker has offline access uh, to your uh, password database. And then just a quick note about Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, after the rescue action last week, the bank is actually still in business. Apparently, uh, some organizations do block access to the legitimate domain name for Silicon Valley Bank, svbank.com. So uh, make sure you're not uh, blocking the legitimate bank, but of course, still a good idea to block possible phishing versions of their website. Well, and that's it for today. Uh, thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.